Hey, welcome back. This is Kelly Borsheim at BorsheimArts.com and I appreciate you being here. I hope that you're learning what you would like to learn out of this and uh, please feel free to give me comments, add questions, and um, let's have a conversation started if that's what interests you and helps you out. So I'm going to continue with painting Lollipop, the working title for this painting, um, because he's got a little lollipop here if you're just joining me. So um, I'm going to continue with the leaves here, and I'm going to try something different that I'm just learning about my, uh, my phone camera, is about this time lapse thing. So we'll do something really quick because you don't need to hear me talking all the time, do you? Thanks. Boy, now you can see why I look so dirty when I'm a street painter, because I do this finger painting all the time. So if you don't know about the street painting book, you might want to check that out on Amazon. It's My Life as a Street Painter in Florence, Italy by Kelly Borsheim. Thank you. <laughs> all right, welcome back. I have been examining this painting now that I've actually put in a lot more of the dark tones and I can start to see some of the relationships here. Now the thing that's interesting to me is I don't want to continue with the same color all the way around. It would be too much of a symmetrical frame for my taste and at some point um, there's not enough variety to hold my interest there. Luckily my reference material shows that this is a different tree and you can see here it's a much brighter and lighter green than the one that's on this side. Okay, so it really, if you squint your eyes, you almost see a line from here to here. This is cold green, and then this is warm green. And so I don't know that I want to divide the canvas or the, the I'm painting on wood, remember. I don't know that I want to paint that quite so dramatically split like that. However, um, I want to actually start looking at this and examine my model because even though I'm working from a photograph, I want to try to act as if I'm actually standing at the river still and am thinking about what to want to do. So this tree, when I look at the rest of the picture that's not going to be in the frame, um, I can't, I don't know if I can even find the original because sadly I've lost a hard drive from dropping too many times and uh, I'm between computers and I, I don't want to take the time to actually look at this. This is fine for me because again I'm not trying to make an actual copy, I'm just using this as a reference the way I would with a live model. Um, so back to this, you have this branch jutting out here obviously in front of the boy's body, okay? And then you have some of this foreground here obviously again in front of his body because it's covering up some of his hands right there if you can see that. and. Um, then uh, we've got a little, this is a transition area between this cold and the green. And I'm a little bit confused by that, frankly, because it looks to me as this, this tree here is actually physically closer to me. And maybe on this side of the land, uh, whereas the other one, I'm not quite sure where it's coming from. It just is coming from up and coming down. However, when I get back into here, the blue-green leaves seem to be coming over this, which would imply that this has a branch at least that's going behind this. So these trees may in reality be much closer together. Um, all right, so I can take a look at my painting and figure out now what I want to do with this here is, is do I want to have all of these at the same plane or is it interesting to have this one more forward and back? The other thing is this is in shadow or it could be that just the leaves are dark because, you know, um, trees have such an amazing variety. In fact, I think green is probably the most difficult color um, because there are so many different subtle shades when you go out. And I find, um, as a figure painter, I often hear people say, oh, you paint the figure, that's amazing, when they're landscape painters. I can't really do that. And I think, really? Because to me, the figure is in a way simple compared to what you do with the landscape because you have so much information you're trying to compress down. Um, 
the thing is, a lot of painters that I know do both painting of landscape and figures because at some point, again, you want to put a figure in an environment. So it really helps to, to have them all. But, you know, when you're starting out, you usually focus on one thing or the other and then, you know, you get really good at that and then hopefully you branch out. And, and I know even painters branch out into sculpture um, or sculptors like me have branched out into painting. So... Um, Anyhow, that I'm going on with a lot, a lot of that sort of thing, but it could be. Why do I have lines there? I don't like that. It's weird. It's just like a separate cut across the thing there. I don't know how I did that, but I'm getting rid of it now because I don't want a line like that to show up and, and never go away. So I'd rather have this bunchy. I wonder. You know what it is? Is I bet it was at each place that I touched the. Um, my version of the fan brush and maybe that's why they do something like this so that you don't have it but then you could easily get a curve instead of a straight line so anyway get rid of the things as I note them um, okay so all right I want I want to have this thing come in now if I take a look again at my original okay if you can look really 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 closely here this branch is coming out horizontally. I don't actually like that. I've been studying that and looking at it, deciding what I want to do with this area of the painting since I haven't actually developed it yet. And I don't like this because it, for me, it's too horizontal. It sort of cuts everything off so much. And also, I'm designing in circles, remember? So I decided that I don't want this coming up because that would make it a ground plant reaching up into that. And that's not necessarily why, because sometimes I actually don't care about logic, which I know is a strange thing to say, but I'm, I'm trying to make something that I think is interesting and valuable. But also, I've got these branches up here in the transition, and I like that because, again, I don't want cold and I don't want warm separated. I like this gorgeous area of blending the two plants together, plus it's near the head and near the top of the frame so that also helps and the light is coming from the top so there are a lot of reasons for me to keep this idea up in here and I need a little bit to cover up his body since I don't actually see what's going on in my model there but I'm actually thinking on this this painting here to mimic this I have this going opposite way this going opposite way and I again maybe it's not reality I don't remember in my in my model this was going straight down and I decided to curve it as part of my curving of most of the leaves actually too so it's it's just the rounding round thing the stone obviously uh, as I spoke about when uh, I was talking about the original designing of the painting it they're very triangular they're very you know planal and all that kind of stuff but I have them arranged in a circular painting like this and even these are a bit circular and I don't know, that's another triangle, but you know, the triangle's behind the three circles, and I'm totally good with that. So, uh, all right, so when I come down here, I'm thinking of making this in this direction, sweeping down. And that's odd because I'm looking at this and it looks like there's a stem going this way, but uh, in the end, I'm only going to care about this uh, to help me figure out a few th shapes and things like that to make it look like a believable set of branches that is different from this one. Okay, so I do think I want to design a little bit this way and it's not at the same height as this so I like the asymmetrical. Also it could be that if I connect the lines like this I could be making a circle here just as I'm making a circle there, just as this would be a different circle. So you see it would be all a bunch of wheels intersecting at different points with this particular wheel here, okay? I don't know if it's going to work or not, but I kind of like the idea of trying to play with design and things like that. So I'm going to go ahead and get started. And um, the... Uh, that little thing, I forgot what it's called, where they do the intermittent thing and you watch me paint something real fast, that might be interesting to do again a little bit later on, but I'm almost wondering if I should go ahead and maybe keep the video going at a normal pace so that I can explain stuff if I'm thinking about it. And if I realize that I'm not thinking very well, then I'll probably just go 
all right, um, let me just put it on that thing again because I don't know how much of this you, you want to watch. So feedback is good. Thank you. Before we move into the actual painting part, I want to show you this is what my palette looked like, except that I just scraped off the big balls of paint. So um, because I'm now making... Um, tree branches that are of the lighter family variety and also a brighter tone and a sunnier tone I decided to just get rid of this palette so I scooped off all of the, all of the paint that was actually still wet and um, put that onto another little page and this is what it looks like here okay so this is that uh, Gamblin Flake White replacement this is a cadmium yellow because I was using an ochre yellow here when I wanted something a wee bit warmer, but I find that ochre is good to mute things a little bit, but um, also it's, it is an, it's a warm yellow, I find, but this yellow here is going to be a brighter, punchier, sunnier yellow for this other bright green plant that I have. So I'm got, I've put some, put some of that on. This is a mixture, I think, of the yellow ochre I had with the green umber. Um, but I thought that the color was good and it's good transition because you can see that the green next to it here is quite a, a cold and strong green. So it could be that I, I will end up using these in conjunction with each other. I think this is a sap green possibly. This was uh, some sort of cold blue or green that um, I don't remember what, what the name of it was. It was just... I'm trying to put on, again, many different varieties on here. This is the green umber that's left, and then this is some raw umber, because I tend to like the earth tone mixed in, plus if I have a stem or something, um, I'm probably going to need to put a lot more white out, because again, this is going to be a light greens, and most of these are already darker than what I'm going to be putting on. So the interesting thing to me was that these two little scoops of the flake white, I wasn't I thought those were old things because I've actually been working on a couple of other paintings since then that I decided not to to worry about photographing too much because I'm trying to get a show in June and I find that as much as I'm enjoying doing these video things I'm actually not working all that well and I'm a slow producer and, and start with so I wanted to get these other paintings worked on because they need to be having the oil dry and then I can come back and work on this. So I always have several projects going on at once. It's it's quite the norm for me. And um, sadly, I've got a couple of big canvases that have been sitting for years. So I can at least know that their paint is quite dry. And it's safe to proceed without a whole lot of oil on top. But I'm digressing as I do. But it's all kind of connected, you know. So I'm going to put out a little bit more white. But I was surprised this color and actually some of these others were still wet enough that I could easily paint with them and I never like to lose anything so um I'm, but here I am going to start with this and I'll be mixing as I go down now I also know that even though I like to mix I prefer to mix on the canvas sometimes it's not really a good idea and sometimes you end up fighting yourself too much so in this case for example this yellow I feel that the cadmium yellow here is way too strong to be in its pure proportion there I don't want it competing with him and I don't really want it taking over the star of the show. I don't want all the eyes to go over to this X section where I'm going to be painting things. So I already know that I'm going to mix that with some white because I'm going to need some lighter colors anyway. But also, I, I want to dull that a bit, which is kind of silly because the whole point of using cadmium is to use a strong bright orange. But at the same time, um, it gives more of an oomph to something than just taking a plain yellow and adding white to it. So you start with oomph and you back it off to, hey, perfect, okay? So that's what I'm gonna do. Okay, so let's have another look. I changed my mind, as I do so often. I added also this um, cold yellow that's called a permanent yellow chiaro, is uh, the Italian word for like a light, permanent yellow light. So this is the yellow cadmium. And then this is some of the sap green mixed with yellow because one, sap green is a, a transparent color and I want to make sure that as I go through some of these sections and I need to cover up the river behind that I have some opacity mixed into the paint. I also know that, the, that as it is straight out of there it's going to be um, too dark. So I've got a cold yellow mixture with some more white. 
I've got the cadmium yellow mixed with the white, and then the sap green mixed with the cadmium yellow and a wee bit of white as I felt like I needed to. I have a feeling I don't have enough paint here because that's my way, but also because um, I've got a lot of real estate to cover, okay? However, um, I, I actually don't like it when all the colors are the same. So if I end up mixing a batch and it's a slightly different one than this, that's gonna work out fine for me because it's more interesting and it's not that paint by number thing, which I shouldn't say paint by number is a negative thing, but it doesn't strike me as interesting. It's a craft thing that, that the kids can do and it's, it's a good way to start with stuff. But um, I kind of like mixing it up. All right, so quit beating that horse to death and let's get going. My brushes still have a wee bit of green on them and they're the dark green, so I'm gonna pick another and let's stick this guy maybe here. That's dry enough and I don't want to stick it too hard. I'd actually like it a little bit higher, but you know, that's, that's the way it goes. I don't want to put it into this wet stuff. It won't work anyway. All right, so I'm going to pick a little bit smaller brush, but a bristle bristle brush. Can you, I don't know where you can see that, maybe against the purple is better. So that's about the size of a finger. Uh, because I think these are, some of these are going to be large and some of these aren't. Now, when I was mixing up with the palette knife, I went ahead and scraped off the stuff on the palette knife and left it up here so that I could take a look and see what I think of it from a distance. And it might, it might actually be a good color. Um, so, all right. In the beginning, let me mix up some of this white with some of this kind of umbery. I'm going to put a wee bit of the yellow into that. Not get, I want to get a tree branch color, not a cold, dead green kind of color. Okay. All right, so I have this one coming in here. And if I did that thing of having it be the circle, let's see. Let's do, let's say this comes up like this, okay? It wouldn't because that's not a perfect circle. But you know what? I'm actually, I don't know. I don't know what I want to do. And this is why people plan ahead again. They don't actually do the designing on, on the actual work. That's what a cartoon means, is, is usually we do our drawings on a separate sheet of paper, and then we take that separate sheet of paper, and we have the lines to work with, and we only transfer the desired lines onto the, the canvas itself. So, all right, maybe, I think I may actually like that line. It's, it's a th kind of a third and a third, you know, it's not really a third, what am I saying? But I, I, I like it. It's a smaller circle than this, but that's okay. Lollipop is, is a very small circle. So that's a starting point for me, and everything will branch out from there. So the first thing I want to do is cover up these sections here where I know that I want a leaf, and I'm going to work the leaves in toward the branches. Okay, also I have a wee bit of sun. I know I've got sun hitting here, so I'm going to go ahead and brighten this up now with just adding pure white to the wet mixture that I've already got on the canvas, on the, on the wood. I can see I'm using canvas in general terms. It's not the material, it's just the, the support is what I mean in this. I actually love painting on this maple wood. It's quite nice. Okay, if the sun is coming from about here, we said, because remember it's hitting his leg, and that's too light, by the way, um, it's going to be more, this will be more light than this, because this is actually going to be curving up and getting a little bit less light because of its angle. I don't need to be that specific with this at this point. I'm just pointing it out to you because sometimes I th don't think about all the things that I think about to be able to share with you. All right, so uh, let me go start in. Uh, that's my knee giving way. Dog. Okay, so I kind of like this section here with the white, and I want to get some more mineral spirits there on my my canvas here, so that I can. Uh, oops, on my now. Can only stay clean enough to go to the art exhibit tonight without having to do a major clean up job. Okay, 
we need to get some spirits because again this this flake white replacement stuff is just not flowing right now when I'm designing I want to be able to flow and I don't want the paint fighting me and that is about the only time the only reason really that anybody would need to put uh, mineral spirits in there because it also would lend to thinner paintings and um, thin paint is a thing that I have to fight against myself because I like to do it that way and it's not necessarily the best way so I'm going to put in this little doop. Okay, I don't like the dark tone of that but it actually needs to be contrasting a lot with his body doesn't it but that that leaf that's actually in the reference material is kind of a, looking like a almost a back it's super 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 bright and I'm using probably too large of a brush for certain areas like this, but um, right now I'm just impatient to try to go back and forth with stuff, and I can knock this down later. Right now I just, I'm going to, I know I'm going to do this because even though I try not to do it, I always do it. Um, I want to paint contrasty enough for me to see make sure I understand where it is I'm going and what the what the drawing is. Now that to me is too much yellow. In the in the reference thing there's the, the bit of light that's catching that. So what I'm going to do is add some more white to some of this green and sap yellow and green it up a little. Um, okay. But basically you can see how contrasty it is against the background and then if I get as it moves in it gets a little darker here or maybe not, just a higher chroma of a different color. Uh, okay, so this is a white branch. I've got too much white on my canvas now. All right, there's another leaf that kind of comes out here and it goes into, if I look at the actual model, it's going into about the point of, of the shoulder. I don't need to be so precise with stuff. I'm more interested in getting a shape of this particular type of branch that's believable. So actually pull that up in there and then get back down. And the other thing of course is I want to remember my original sketch to some degree which is based on the model so I don't need to stick literally to it but I would like to have something kind of going on there that otherwise what was the point of doing it? You know, I say that, but then again, I'll contradict myself and say, well, you've got to remain flexible. Well, that's true, you do. Because, as again, as you go along, especially because you're not making an exact copy, you are going to have things hit you a different way at certain points of the game. All right, so maybe I should take a smaller brush and remember that I want to put something lighter. This branch is going to go back. And now, here in the image, I see there's a, a little bit of space up in here and a little bit more of an elongated downward space. Now, I may not have done enough background color because I wasn't sure where I wanted this elbow, but I mean the, the shoulder. The shoulder's going down. He's, he's got a tilt to his shoulder like this. And then it's going down into the arm that's, that's here. And you heard me talk about widening this so that it would match up to that. So it may be that I don't need a leaf here, and maybe I need more green. But my main point is I don't want to take this dark shape that's here, or even if I extend it here, I don't really necessarily want to cut it exactly in half. Um, usually it's your symmetry and your everything being the same that kills the action in a, in a painting. And um, I want to have a variety of shapes, uh, also because that's what nature's doing, and it could be these things, weird things bouncing around. So the thing is, I'm going to make this an angle that it's also not perpendicular to this leaf. Here, it's a kind of a curving arch, and that again works well with a circular design. But I want to figure out the placement on this thing so that it does what I want it to do. And in this case, I can... Technically, I have this branch too far out. It should be more in line with here if I'm following this. Um, I'm going to be putting that up there. I think there's that one branch that comes down here. 
I don't know. I don't think I really need to be so literal about this particular thing. But in any event, I'm going to make a shorter space up here in these spirits to make it flow. And I want less green into that branch. Let me knock it over here to the, the umbers and white, the raw umber and white. And uh, this actually came down and bumped into, it came down into here and, and did this. So, I don't want to get a nice feel of an arc. And then plants, you know, they don't usually come straight out. That's not, if you had a branch sticking straight out, it's a great way to just snap it off. So what you want to do, you shoot up and then the weight of the branch pulls it back down again and that's more natural of how things kind of go around all right so let's just do that that's not nearly as light as it needs to be so let me add a wee bit more just pure white in there to mix in with what's going on and again the sun's coming from down here so this is going to be the lightest and it helps to have paint on your brush I don't want to thicken it up because you're not going to have a branch. The branch should be thicker towards the base of the the trunk of the of the tree, just as our the muscles of our body of our limbs are going to be closer to the trunk, and then it slenders down as it gets into the new growth, the new life, the further away. Oops, more paint on me. Okay, uh, that may not match up perfectly, but uh, we'll see what happens. Okay, so I have a light color there. I have this kind of doing this thing here. And right now, I'm more concerned about developing the shapes than I am getting exactly the right tone. I do want to work in the direction of getting the right tone, but I want more to make something that's kind of interesting. And remember, I'm enlarging this quite a bit, so that makes me have to remember these relationships a lot and go, mm -hmm, what's going on with that? Okay. This is a really pretty green. It, it may be too, too yellowy, but uh, again, I'm getting in the ballpark of the actual reality. When I see this leaf, I've got to pull this a little bit more this way and then pull down, get this kind of doing its diagonal thing down here. And then this does a, I was going to say something, I just remembered when I said something else, and now I don't remember what it was. Um, oh, probably when I went in to do this, the second painting, that is when I would fix any kind of um, shift in color that I felt like I needed or wanted. Uh, I'm not married to the color that I see in the actual painting, but okay. So now we have that one spiky, and then we have a brighter green coming in, maybe with some more yellow added, or maybe some more yellow with white added to this base color here. And a wee bit of spirits to flow. You don't want too much spirits because then you end up having derpy paint. And especially when you're trying to be precise on your drawing, that's the time you need the least to have uh, drippy drippy painty kind of thing. Okay. And this is a quality I like of this, is this jiggy jaggy. Now I'm not relating things very well because what I'm finding is I'm out of space for this and then I'm down here with this point. So let's go ahead and add this bottom leaf here and work from large to small again and figure out what I've done. It's not so good. Okay, and this can come down as a point. So yeah, it's interesting that this leaf has a lot of jiggy jaggies, and it's I'm sure that there's a mathematical pattern to this. Um, it's just that at the moment, yeah. So I've kind of done some. See, I actually pulled this plant too far forward. It should be under the ear a little bit. So I'm going to make do. So I'm making the leaf a little bit bigger. 
You know, the, the nice thing about painting the nature is you have far fewer critics. Because the fact is, if it looks like a leaf, most people aren't going to be upset about it. Whereas when we do human faces, of course, people go, oh, that doesn't look like a human being. And good on them for noticing that. Um, and so there's a little bit of yellow in that sand here. And this kind of dips down. It's still connected to this part. So this is going to dip down here and then do a diagonal coming up. I don't quite want a kiss from where this ends to that end, or even where it changes from dark to light. So I want to kind of pull this up in this way. And there. So while that is still wet, I'll slide that off a bit. It keeps my options open. You know, sometimes it's difficult, and you can say, well, I can fix that later, or I'll cover it when you do the painting, but other times you you don't want to give yourself too much stuff to do fixing all the time. If you can fix it, it's like having a strong foundation, and you, you'll find that you'll be more efficient on your working. Actually, that's interesting to turn back around. Ah, interesting making a, a thing with a selfie, because I really get a new... Um, right now, I think that those greens are kind of working, Mostly because this back here is uh, a browner kind of color, and this really pops up, boom, to the subject. So right now I'm, I'm really kind of pleased with how this is going. And we'll see how, if I can continue that. The other thing is, shoot, I need another clean brush. Part of the problem with this is that I have my branch going in the wrong space. So let's pull this over, and that happened because I had this in the wrong space, uh, but I'm going to make it a long arching thing over here instead. So right now I've got a clean brush, I'm using mineral spirits to remove the paint that I just added, and hopefully not remove the boy's skin that I put in oh, probably at least a week ago. Oh, crepes. And, yeah, white is just going to smear everywhere, isn't it? Eee. Another reason I don't like to clean is because sometimes when I'm cleaning up, I feel like I'm making more of a disaster than existed before I did anything. Okay, that was in the skin already. I must have touched something there when I spoke to you about that area. Don't have enough clean paper towel. I don't want to leave the spirits on there because they'll start kind of eating away at this this paint, and I don't care for that. All right. So okay, I'm gonna probably put that into skin tone, so I'm not worried that that's in the wrong place. However. I do want to go in with this. And let's see, if I look at this point here, it's coming about down the middle of the neck, so it really need to be over here. But still, I want to keep it in the shadow area. Um, so let's start pulling this line here. I don't want it parallel to this, though. That's another thing. So... Let's make this arch up here a little bit bigger, and then they have this go down sooner. Maybe that's a good compromise. You see, now I have the converging lines a little bit. I mean, this does look like it's curving under, and I could straighten that if I want. Actually, maybe I should go ahead and probably should do that with spirits instead of putting green white onto the boy's skin. All right. Let me pull this away and give me that arch that I want. Yeah. Goodness. Just like a little kid. Which is, you know what? That's okay. Could be worse. And I remember being a little kid was so much fun most of the time. Okay, 
Yes, I think at this point. I need to settle down with that now. Let's do get rid of this so it doesn't confuse me anymore. It seems apparent that I will. Whoops, what am I doing? I didn't want to clean that, didn't want to put white in there. And because I know I'm going to go over this with a, a darker mid uh, skin tone, I don't need to get it totally off of the green. I just need to get the tone knocked down so that it won't mess it up too much. Mess it up meaning putting lights in my shadow of the body. All right. And again, I'm going to rework this. But okay, so I'll pull the skin down more this way. And I may need to angular it make his shoulder a little more angular there depending maybe too bulbous right here as the trapezius is coming up into the neck and then you have a little bit of the, the shoulder will come out but it may be that's a little bit too curvaceous right at that bony point um, all right so let's get back to go in which brush was I using not that was too big maybe this one Nope, that was too small. Not Eccolo. Okay, I'm going to come in with a little bit darker color at this point. And maybe a little bluer, but not too much. Alright, so let's start designing this dark shape. This dark shape came out, let's see, this one was extended. You know, that's kind of what it is. This got too curvaceous down here, didn't it? Because this is a leaf at an angle. Oh, goodness. All right. Throw that one in the garbage, spread it out. And it also will have a jiggy jaggy. It's going to come down here. And this is why people like to have things done ahead of time. I just, I don't, because I go back and forth. Um, you've already seen me change my mind about some fairly big things already. And, uh, but in the end, I don't know, I kind of muddle my way through. But, you know, another problem with me perhaps is a problem, I don't know. I don't see myself changing it, because... I'm fascinated by the process of things, so in a way, it doesn't really bother me so often that um, these things aren't necessarily going according to a plan, because I like how they're going, and I find it curious to try this or try that and, and move on and... Goodness, put some paint on stuff. I don't really have very many super nice clothes that it would worry me to to death to have. Oh, that's that's a little too green there. I have to worry about stuff getting my clothes on the same hand though. Once it gets on your clothes, then it gets on your next thing you touch, and then next thing you know you're sleeping with it, and then next thing you know you know you see the pattern. Okay, so this is a smaller leaf that goes here. I can see that that's too. Too bright, first of all, too blue, second of all, and I'm not following the shape at all of this because this leaf here should have been inside this curvy one, but I can sort of go in here. So it must be that I'm getting carried away with this thing of being inside of. And then this does sort of a repeat of the shape, which is kind of... You want, you want some repetition gives people a feeling of, of sense of security. And um, it's a psychological thing, I think. Uh, however, you, too much of it, and you, you kind of you get into the boring realm, realm. We don't want to feel safe all the time, but we do like our adventure in a safe environment. You know, when you go to the movie theater... 
you know that you're watching a film. So in that respect, you can. I actually find those those you know Jason thirteen type the movies of people coming and hunt you in your house. I find those really more terrifying when if you watch them at home because sadly that's, even though those things are based on imagination too many times they're not of course the worst idea is maybe they be, become the imagination of a third party and then that's not good I don't know how much of that is actually an excuse for that or if it's just evil exists in the world and there it is. So I didn't, I didn't make that, because that, again, that should have been all in there, but um, I'm going to suggest it. Not, I'll change it if I don't like it later. Okay, so now I should have put in some ocean color. See, I got confused with my triangles where I was, so what am I doing? That's a clean brush. This is the... All right, let's go back to this baby. Wipe this out. I've run out of bristle brushes here and I don't want to go get one. I've actually blocked my real studio with this door because the stair steps here lead up into my studio. But because I started on this, I just decided to stay with it and keep the lighting fairly consistently. Um, although I can honestly say it's not the best lighting. Um, so maybe that was not a good reason to be doing these sort of things. Now I'm going to come back down here and go again. I don't want to kiss with this bright coming up here, so I'm going to make a little bit of space there. But I want it to overlap a little bit with the arm. So that's hard because I probably pulled this yellow here over too far. Maybe I should just get rid of that while it's still kind of wet. Do a finger painting thing. Um, but I also don't want this to come out too far. All right, so I'm gonna come out over here, and I don't like how cold that is, so I'm gonna add some of this yellow into some of this green. I don't wanna add the pure yellow because then it will uh, not look like it belongs to the same kind of leaf. Okay, and in my reference, that has gone to a point here. I think what it is is I'm enlarging these shapes too much and then I don't have the space. So what it means is that I'm talking too much and I'm not really paying attention to what I'm doing. Um, not that that's your fault at all, because I don't really get into that whole fault thing. Everything's a choice that I'm making. And you note that I'm still talking even after saying that, so there you go. Alright, so now I want to come back in and get the next tone of this, this leaf in here. So the three tones for me at this point is going to work fine. I can come in and develop these things a little bit later. I want some blue in that. And um, that will make it all really fun. Right now I'm trying to really figure out the shapes. The, this is one of the problems with uh, knowing all the steps is that you kind of jump ahead. And maybe maybe it's you do that before you really understand all the steps. but. Um, because I do know a teacher once was trying to have us spend 20 minutes as beginning students to do a 20, 20 minutes to spend getting the perfect gesture in S and C curves. And the idea was to really, really, really just not use that as going through the motions to make a piece of art, but to actually look at the proportions and look at the flow lines and really think about what it is that we were doing and get everything kind of working really, really beautiful. This flow here and this flow there, and, and you know, this, and, and also to make, even if it was a, a C curve or an S curve like this, to really make it all proportionally fit well together before we went into the next step, which would be the articulation and drawing in the straight lines and actually developing the shapes that we know that we're trying to make. And I watched a student come in and he did this little thing and he did the whole drawing to completion and the teacher said, when he came around, you know, to his greets. What did you do? Well, I, I got finished with my perfect gesture, so I decided to keep doing this thing. 
But the thing is, you could see from his figure, it really was not good. It was his habit of doing these things. And then they got into this horrible argument. I've been taught by the best teachers. And my teacher stood still and just said, I'm not going to contradict anything that you're saying, but I'm saying to you, the exercise was to spend 20 minutes getting the perfect gesture thing. Because, and also, it's probably an interesting point. He never said this, but to me it's obvious because I've also been a teacher. But sometimes it's more difficult to teach people who already know a lot or already have been doing a lot and already have habits established than it is to take a, a young fresh mind and and say this is the path you know because they don't have anything they're fighting against the rest of us this right here that I'm doing is because it's a habit that I have to do a certain way of thinking and approaching things it's really difficult for me to move out into that and again it's really difficult for me to paint like Soroya because that's not how I paint, and that's not how, how I've ever painted, and I don't actually know how he paints. So to really learn that, I should try to step back fresh and say, okay, I should do a copy of his piece, learn what he's doing, and try to remove myself and try to make myself into that young, fresh mind that doesn't know much of anything. Um, it, it's really hard to work that way, because once you have a feeling and you have some experience with stuff, you want to use that to help you get ahead faster. So um, it, it may not be a matter of that. It may just be a matter of a case of indecision and also breaking habits. But in the end, um, the, the student ended up leaving this particular class because he felt like he didn't like the tension between the teacher and him. But the, from my point of view, it really was that he wasn't open to learning a new process, even though he had paid money to go learn that other process. So again, we all have these sort of struggles inside of ourselves and we also are impatient. And maybe the older we get, the more impatient we are because we're quite aware that, you know, it's not going to go on forever. And when you're young, you're, you feel like life does go on forever and you can keep going with things. So, um, all right, so I'm going to keep going with this. And let's start back up here. There's this one little dip into the head that I actually enjoy. And that is going to come in behind this leaf here. Look at that gorgeous S-curve. I probably exaggerated that. And I'm going to do this. You can see some of the color I'm mixing as I, for, because I don't mix thoroughly on the brush either. Either. Either, either, or. Let's call the whole thing off. That was a horrible singing, sorry. And that's too blue and too bright, but uh, again, I'm just going to kind of keep going on with some shapes here and, and try to amuse myself. Okay. That has to be a yellower of stuff. And then this is another white branch that comes down about there. So this is way too bright. I, I mean, I can tell you I'm having fun, but at a certain point it gets to be like, Hells, what are you doing? Just wasting time again. And uh, I need to stop falling in love so much. Okay. A couple to start. a green shape. Now, let's go. I want to get some branches going up this way. Now, the thing is, if I take this branch that's going horizontal and I curve it up, I should have some open space in there, correct? Or at least another branch coming down here that would fill in this other space. So that is probably the way I'm going to go. And uh, let's see. For right now, I'm going to take... See, I always forget to change between the light and the dark brush. And that's not my smartest move, because then you really get things confused. Okay, so then this leaf comes up to about here. I think these greens are luscious and gorgeous. And I don't know how I lucked into mixing those, except sun green helps a lot with that sort of thing. 
Woo. Yeah, baby. All right. Where it's supposed to stop. Let's have that come in front of that just for the giggles. Okay, I'm going to stand back, see how it's looking. I don't know. Look, I painted a bird. You see that shape? It's kind of a cute little birdie. I like him. It may not float for anybody else's boat, but I'm enjoying myself. Okay, so then I want to have another leaf come back in here behind this. Whoops, but I don't want it too perpendicular with these things. And perpendicular is not what I meant. Uh, okay, this shape needs to be broken up, so I'm going to put in some green coming in down this way. And let's go off to there. For right now, leave this. And then this, I like that coming up into... A spike right there. Okay, now I see I've got some shapes there. This is actually probably a negative shape that I never painted in. So let's go in with a darker green just to give some contrast to here. And um, that point actually goes beyond into the rock. Whoops, I need some lighter. Get back into my light. And a little bit of spirits just to give me that flow. Okay. Again, I didn't want a kiss coming off of that, so I left that a little bit early there. It's kind of not making a lot of sense to me, and I realize that um, some part of it is because the original is not making sense to me either. So, um, anyhow... I'm going to keep on because sometimes it's just because it's new. Actually, oh, I see that leaf is flitted. So I need to come in with this and do the other half of this. Let's say that's in perspective. So that's going to come out. And this little whoosh dips down here. That's what's going on. Now, even though I've changed the branch, I still, I like this this thing coming here so um, I'm gonna figure out how to make that work and in the meantime let's do that as if it's an, a, a leaf at an angle and I don't want that to be so light but I also don't want it to be so warm some of the grays of the rock will start bouncing into some of this a little bit And again, once I get the original shapes kind of decided upon, then I can start doing, let, let them dry a little bit. And then each leaf I can take and, and repaint with um, the colors based on reflected lights and bouncing lights and transparency of the leaf and uh, shadows of leaves upon leaves and different things like that. Um, so I don't need to be particularly personal about all of this, but... Uh, Okay, so is that a light or is that, which one's my light brush? All right. Maybe this would be kind of fun to do. Let's see that goes in there. And let's pull this down. Maybe it's too much repeating of the pointy shapes there. We'll see.
So what I like about this, besides my bird, is I like this grouping here. And when I pull this down, I am almost making a circle in this direction. So I'm kind of repeating the shapes and things like that a little bit as far as the overall things go. It'll, um, again, it'll develop as I go on. And I want to leave some space here for the background because I also, you know, I don't want the leaves totally. That might be what this is here is some of the river behind it. I just don't quite know. So I'm going to keep on carrying on. And... Uh, let me try putting this into that other uh, fast mode because I'm learning so much. Thanks. This is not finished, but I have the idea of developing with the cold, and I have the brightness that um, I'm going to sit and look at for a while and see if I like it. The other thing is that when I stand back to look at it now, the part that bothers me the most are all these open white spaces here and how light this is, and this is far too light. So the next time I want to come in and fill in these places, oh, not that, that's just a super white light. But I want to fill in these places that now are evident that I need to develop a, a little bit, uh, tone them down because I, I actually can't see anymore with them. The, then I'm going to reevaluate the rocks. But at some point, once I get a little bit more here on the background um, and fill in this stuff, then I'm going to kind of let this sit for a bit and make let it, the um, oils dry. Because the fact that the flake white was still wet that I had put on my palette uh, probably at least five days ago means that I really really want to wait for this a little bit um, to do this I just saw in the reflection something I don't like do you see this dark shape here dark shape here the repetition of this I find makes a tunnel of his leg and I don't really like that at all so I'm gonna have to fix that and I don't know what it is gonna do but some part of me thinks I'm gonna take off this dark if I can Maybe it's too late for that. Or maybe it'll be that as I move the... See, the, the leg shadow to me is too dark under here. So um, I'm going to be lightening this and changing that. Maybe when it, this is not such a straight form, I, do, I won't feel that it's, it's um, stopping the action on a nice fleshy round leg because uh, this is definitely too contrasty in here. And that may be the real problem and not the problem with how I designed the leaves. But I'm going to take a look at that. So... In the meantime, I'm going to um, let this dry a little bit here so that I can go into these areas that are closer to this and uh, check it out, fill in some of this. And then the likelihood is I'll probably start toning down the rocks to get them in the right relationship because I like the way this tone and this tone and this tone and him are actually coming together. It's just that now, this whole section here especially, it's a lot, a lot of light. And so it's pulling my attention away from that. And um, I uh, always try to work with the worst things first. So I'm going to take a pause, think about this for a while, go work on some other paintings, maybe even work on my sculpture. Um, and then uh, I'll get back. Thanks for watching. BorsheimArts.com. Follow me at Patreon.com slash Kelly Borsheim. And also please like this video. Please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And um, share it with your friends. Because